We're going to, uh, let me, I was going to try to introduce a little bit about uh, tribulation, you know, type deal. We're fixing to in chapter 6, get into the tribulation times in chapter 6, really through chapter 20. We're going to talk about, you know, the events of tribulation. This goes from the beginning of tribulation all the way through the Messianic kingdom, all the way through, basically, for us, you know, type deal, uh, the 75-day interval in, in, at the end and all this kind of stuff. And then the aftermath after that, and then the eternal order in chapter 21, chapter 22. Uh, there's basically, you know, I was thinking before I, before I got into this, you know, that we did our Daniel study, and I'm sure most of you, most, a lot of you wouldn't even hear of our Daniel study, uh, but most of you probably like me, you know, you kind of get out of sight, out of mind, you know, type deal. But in Daniel study, it talks about the reason for the tribulation, or the purpose of the tribulation times, the purpose of all the things we do. And Daniel gave us a gave us the purposes of going through these things and what it was supposed to do and what it will do, okay? So I want to take a little bit this, you know, time this morning to just kind of give you the purpose for these things and everything else rather than going into chapter 6, you know, just kind of give you some of those purposes and all. There's six of them, you know, type deal, but you have to remember they come from basically the Daniel study and the Daniel study of the 77s, <laughs> and I don't know where, how, how deep I'm going to be able to get into through this morning, but... The Daniel study, you remember, there's, there were 77s and 70s, they call about 70 weeks of Daniel type deal. It goes from, if you will, the rebuilding of Jerusalem, rebuilding of the temple, all this kind of stuff, uh, all the way through Messianic Kingdom. Uh, this talks about from here, and it's just 77s, it costs 70 weeks, but you know, we know it, those weeks stand for basically years, okay? 77s divided up into one section of verse 7, then there's, uh, ooh, Excuse me. Then there's 62 sevens, and then there's one seven after that. This comes down to seven, it comes down to 49 years. Just breathe, Mark. Slow down. Let's take a time up. 49 years. This turns out to be uh, 42, 434 years. This comes out to be seven years. And you add all those together, together you basically get 490 years. This 490 years Daniel's talking about here talks about uh, the things that happened and the things that you know lead up to and go into tribulation time and what what's going to happen and all this is talk, talking about basically the Jewish nation talking about Israel. We have to remember Scripture is written to Jews. This time deal basically is written talking about the Jewish nation and the Jewish people, but it's talking about Israel, the country, the nation itself. Okay, why it's so important through Scripture that we we bless those we bless Israel. If we bless Israel, Israel blesses us. Those that do not bless Israel, we're going to pay for it. Okay, it's this type of The first seven, seven in Daniel's study, the 49 years, talks about the building of the temple, building of Jerusalem. Starts back with Ezra and Jeremiah. <laughs> Ezra and Jeremiah, you know, type deal. And how they're, they're the kings that gave. Nehemiah, thank you. Okay, thank, thank goodness Carol's over there. <laughs> Ezra and Nehemiah, where the king goes and gives them the dicks to go back and, and build up Jerusalem, put the moat back in, put the city back in, and all this kind of stuff. Then the next, basically, 62, 7, 434 years, start from that point in time and goes on through all the way down to the first, first coming of Christ. Okay? And that's just what it talks about, all the things that's going to happen, you know, in Israel and what, how God is going to deal with them in, in Israel. This, this period of 400, here basically 483 years, 483 years, and all this happens, you know, just once it started, and back to somewhere around 440, 400, 440, 450 B.C. is when all this began. Once it started, it ran, it's time, it ran just, just continually. There, there was no breaks in it or anything else. This goes down at the end of this 483 years is first coming, first coming of Jesus, if you will. The first time he is here. This, this as Jesus' life, and as we'll see in one of the purposes of tribulation was because of their rejection of Christ. And that's the reason they have these, reason that they're, that they're going through all these things here. That at the end of this 483 years, they, they basically... The crucifixion of Christ about 32, 33, 33, 32, 33 A.D., there's a time gap. It stopped at that point. Why did it stop at that point? Because the Jewish nation had rejected Christ, and since they rejected Christ, then they were under judgment for that. 
It was going to take many years, and we know it takes many years to go through this rejection and getting back to the to the point where Israel is back in the auspices of being God's chosen people, and you know God God you know blessing Israel itself. Okay, at the end of this 483 years until this last seven begins down here. Okay, top deal. <clears throat> This is what we call the times of the Gentiles. We don't know how long, and don't know anything about how long that is going to be. We know it's already been, you know, 2,000 years plus of this time of the Gentiles, waiting for time, but the 483 years to begin the last seven years, okay? And what's going to happen in this time of the Gentiles, when it comes down through here, this will end, and this last seven-year period will begin at the sign of the peace treaty, between Israel and the Antichrist, okay? But all these things, once it, once you have this time break of how many years it's in there, Scripture doesn't ever tell us, but once we have that time break going for 2,000 years, 3,000 years, whatever it may be, okay? Once that time break is over and the tribulation begins, they, at that point in time, they know specifically, and we know specifically, what's going to happen from there on until eternity, Okay? We know there's going to be seven years of tribulation. After seven years of tribulation, there's going to be a 75-day interval between tribulation and basically the Messianic kingdom. At the end of that 75-day period, there's going to be a thousand years of the Messianic kingdom where Christ is going to come back and rule and reign. At the end of the Messianic kingdom, that you know, basically where Satan's going to be brought back you know, to the earth and he's going to have one last battle to try to defeat Christ, defeat God himself, he's going to be overthrown and we're going to start going to the eternal order. Okay? So this kind of lays out in what it is, and all these things we'll look at today are basically the purposes of those. In Daniel 9.24, if you want to look back in Daniel 9.24, it tells you what these six purposes are. Daniel 9.24 says, 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. And then he gives us the six reasons, the six purposes. One, to finish the transgression. Let me turn this up. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, bro. Okay. To finish the transgressions. Two, to make an end of sin. Three, to make reconciliation for iniquities. To bring it forward, bring the everlasting righteousness. Five, to seal up visions of prophecy. And six, to anoint the most holy. So that is the reason we go through and the reason God has given us for the tribulation time. All those things during this period we're going to look at again in chapter six. All these things come about to do these things through, you know, basically for the, for the people. For you and I, for the Jews, especially, you know, so that they'll, they'll come to know God better, okay? First one is to, to finish up transgression. Well, brief. Finish transgressions. Uh, basically, talks about finish. The word finish in Hebrew means to bring to completion, okay? And transgression is a strong word for sin, if you will. And also, the sin is rebel. Same word in the Hebrew here. So he's talking about here, instead of finishing transgression, is to finish the rebellion. This finish of the rebellion, is, you know, specifically is the finish of the, of the rejection of Christ as Messiah. So he's going to give us these things. It says, uh, <clears throat> this rejection, if you read, read Isaiah 53, 1 through 9, which is on the board, I was going to read that, but we're going to time constraint. You read it, okay? And, you know, pull it out, you know, that type of deal. So with all these things talks about, you know, what, what goes about in, to, in order to do the finish of other of uh, transgressions, okay? The second purpose, to make an end of sins, Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel 37 type deal. Make, it, make an end of sin here, to, when it talks about making an end of sin, it's to break, if you will, to lock it up, to be done. So sins here is to miss the mark, and this is make end of sins in daily life. And this is the end of sins in daily life of the Jewish people. Okay? Specifically what it's, what it's talking about here. In Jeremiah 31, 34, let's look back and read that real quick for you. For you. <clears throat> Jeremiah 31, verse 31 through 34 says, The time has come, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, the Jews, okay? Israel itself. It would not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though, it, though I was a husband, a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel in the time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in the minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. 
No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them. Okay? So basically here he's talking about the ends of sins, and this is the sins of the Jewish people. And therefore it, it talks about, and we know, you know, I've talked about in Daniel study time, Bill. When we get to at the end of time, prior to, if you will, prior to the millennium kingdom coming, prior to Christ coming back, at the end of tribulation time, all the Jews will be saved. Every Jew alive will be saved at that point in time. What they will do is then is pray to God for the Christ to come back for the second coming. To bring in the millennium kingdom, if you will. Okay? And we know once that happens, once they go into the millennium kingdom type deal, every Jew that goes into the millennium kingdom, and really every Gentile at that point in time, but every Jew that goes into the millennium kingdom will be saved, and every Jew that's born, every young Jew that's born in the millennium kingdom, they will be saved also. That is a promise God gave them. So that every Jew, once they get the millennium team, thousand year reign, every Jew will remain saved. That's why it talks about in, in Jeremiah, there's no reason to, to witness to a Jew. Because God will be implanted in their hearts and they will know God and there would be no reason to not to know God, no reason for, you know, for, for people to, to worship them or I mean, to enlighten them about who Christ is. They will personally know them. For Gentiles, different deal. Okay? The Gentiles is a different deal. Gentiles, during this period of time, they, they will have children. They, all the Gentiles going into the Messianic kingdom, they will all be saved also. Okay? When they have children, they will be, have the sin nature in these children, and therefore they will have 100 years to be saved. If at the end of 100 years they are not saved, the Gentiles are not saved, all the Jews part of 100 years will be saved. That's God's promise to them and the covenant that he made for them. Okay? All the Gentiles at the end of this 100 years, at this point in time, if they are saved, they will continue throughout the rest of the Messianic kingdom going to the eternal order. But they will never die. But if the Gentiles that go to 100 do not know Christ and are not saved at, the, at exactly 100 years to the day, they will be brought to judgment and they will die. And as soon as they die, they will go to hell. Okay? To await the white throne judgment. Because that's what it that's what it's all about. But here it talks about to make an end of sins. This making an end of sin, he is talking about making an end of sin of daily sinning of the Jewish people because they know God and they live for God. Okay? We as Gentiles that are saved would be the same way. It put may put an end to daily sinning in our lives. Okay, because we have Christ embedded in our hearts. Okay. Let me just give you the rest of them, and next week we'll, we'll just pick up chapter four and uh, chapter six and go. The third one is to make reconciliation for, for iniquity. <clears throat> Basically, reconciliation talks about make atonement, is what uh, reconciliation is talked about, and iniquity is to the sin nature. And here it talks about, as we, the, like these first two is talking about, you know, the sin nature in, is, is God is making a way for us to defeat the sin nature in our lives. Okay? And make us, you know, who we are and who God wants us to be. The next one, the fourth one is to bring an age of righteousness. Righteousness here is taught, this, this area is called the Messianic Kingdom, thousand year reign of Christ. Uh, scripture verses is Isaiah 11, 1 through 5. We've seen the first part of Isaiah 11 in verses 1 and 2 talks about the attributes of who, who God is. Okay? And then gives us those things and talks about those things, but it goes down through and it says, uh, but the righteous would judge the needy. With justice he would give decisions from the poor of the earth. He would strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he would slay the wicked. Righteous would be his belt and faithfulness would sash around his waist. Basically he's talking about during this millennium kingdom time, Christ is going to rule and reign on the earth and he will deal with sin immediately. Now, it doesn't tell us in a lot of scripture how that is. We know Christ is going to rule and reign from Jerusalem and all of us is going to come back to rule and reign with him that are saved and we're raptured out of here and all, okay? All of us will come back to rule during that thousand years. It does not tell us how we're going to rule and reign, how we're going to rule. This is a worldwide that Jesus is going to rule and reign over. That will be divided into different areas of the world where, you know, you and I may be over a cat in America. I don't have a clue, okay? But, that, you know, that type of deal. There will be two branches of government during this time. 
One branch is the Jewish government, one branch is the Gentile government, okay? But in both branches, the Jews are in, the Jews are in control. They're the, they're the top. They're coming right under Christ and the Jewish, Jewish people and Jewish believers, okay? From there, we as Gentiles, I always call, just like the thought back when they was built, when we, you know, earlier in Scripture, where Gentiles considered dogs of the world, no good, this type of deal. That's where we're going to be on the bottom of this totem pole. Me and you are going to be ruling and reigning with Christ forever, doing whatever. But who cares? You know, some of you, well, that's not fair. <laughs> I'm going to go, who ever said fair? Christ never said fair. Christ said, serve me, okay? Serve me where I call you to serve, okay? And we'll be, be I always say we'll be very happy with that. I'll be very happy there because I'm there, okay? A lot of people I know is not going to be there, okay? Fifth, when they seal up visions and prophecies, it's talking about the visions and prophecies. It's talking about visions come from people like uh, Elisha and Elijah. Prophecy, that's an oral, oral, oral prophecy, if you will. Written prophecy come from all the major prophets and the minor prophet, prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and then the 12 minor prophets, which, which, which some of those we studied, you know, just prior to going into, into these things. Basically, the year is to, to, they'll put an end to vision, the end to prophecy. Why? Because in the scripture itself and all the things talking about here into, into tribulation time, this is to basically, under the Old Testament, and goes all the way through the Messianic kingdom. When this period and point of time, all these, all these things that happened in this 409 years, you know, all prophecy will be fulfilled from the Old Testament times. The only new thing in Scripture, okay? The only new thing in Scripture in all these 66 books in Scripture here is the last two chapters of Revelation, chapter 21 and chapter 22. All the other things through chapter 20 is defined and written about in the Old Testament times, either written or, or oral, and all these things so there's nothing new in there. At the point in time where you know, basically the Messianic kingdom ends, all prophecy is complete, done, okay? Nothing else, nothing else out there. There's no eternal order. Old Testament didn't talk about the eternal order. Not one Old Testament prophet saw the eternal order, saw New Jerusalem and all this kind of stuff. All this stuff is only seen by John in his revelation of Jesus Christ in chapter 20, chapter 22 of Revelation. Okay? <clears throat> and the sixth one, the anointing of the most holy. The anointing of the most holy here basically is not talking about a person. It's not talking about knowing Christ as the Lord and Master of the world type deal. The knowing the most holy he's talking about here is one of those purposes is the building of the temple. The anointing of the temple in the Messianic kingdom basically is where, where Christ will rule and reign from and we will be blessed from. Remember there's four, there's four temples, if you will. First temple, temple was Solomon's temple. Second temple was Jerusalem's temple. Third temple is the temple that we're waiting to what's, what's to be built right now, and that's the tribulation temple, okay? Not started yet, but it will be built, and it will function throughout the tribulation time. That's where the Antichrist is going to make the abomination and desolation, you know, and he's going to declare himself God, okay? And everybody's going to worship him in this temple. The temple will be destroyed, okay? And the fourth temple, the, the anointing of the most holy here, is the temple basically of the Messianic kingdom where Christ is going to rule and reign from. And then, that's the last temple we'll see, except the temple that's, that's basically in heaven itself, where all of it is the temple, in my, my view, okay, type deal. So, all these things are just talking about the purposes of tribulation time. The things that, you know, lead up to, and you know, we see in beginning chapter 6, the seal judgments, and then the trumpet judgments, and then, then the uh, bold, bold judgments, uh, all those things that we're going to study and see that see the things that happened here and all these things where the devastation and judgment is going to be brought on the world is all done to fulfill these six purposes that God gives us, you know, for the tribulation time and the end times study. Okay. Any questions? Okay. That's as quick as I can run through that. As hard as I can run through it, you know, type deal. So, uh, but again, we'll start with chapter six next next week about the. About the four horsemen, okay? I know you just wear, you just, you know, tickle to death to find out about the four horsemen. So come back next week and we'll talk about the horses and all, okay? I love you. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for giving us this opportunity to just meet together. Meet together as brothers and sisters in Christ. 
to spend the time fellowshipping together and, and learning of your word. Father, the only way we grow is by learning your word and applying it to our lives. Father, help us to not only learn and have the knowledge in Scripture, but also, Father, give us the wisdom of Scripture. And the wisdom of Scripture is put the knowledge into effect, put the knowledge into our, our daily lives and our daily walk of reaching out to others for you. Father, we just love you so much and we, we, we just stand in awe of your majesty, stand in awe of how, how important you are and what, how powerful you are. The world sees you and Jesus as a lamb. The world sees you as a loving person, which you are, which you both are. But God is another side and that the other side is his judgment. They refuse to see the judgment side and the judgment side, because you are all-knowing and all-powerful and all those things of you know, being God the Father type deal, you have to deal with sin. And you deal with sins in our lives by forgiving us of our sins and bringing us into the family of God and bring us into eternal life. For all those that do not accept that free gift of grace, that gift of eternal life, judgment will be brought on. And when judgment is brought on, they will be banished to hell forever. Father, we pray that no one's lost. We pray that all will be saved. That's what you came for, to save all, to save everybody. We know that's not going to happen. But God, we pray for their souls, that they accept you as Christ and Master and King before it's too late. Help us to witness to them. Help us to live lives that show them what you've done enough for us. Forgive us in the way we fail you. Bless each and every home, each and every person here as they walk to this, this week in this sinful world, but help us keep our eyes on you and understand that you're in charge and whatever happens, it comes through you first. And we can rest with you knowing that regardless of whatever, we win. We win. Because one day we'll spend eternity with you because of whose we are, and that's your children. Bless keeping God us rest in Christ's name. Amen. Love you. See you next week. Chapter 6 next week, I promise. Yes, good.